look at example number one. This is a question involving calculating the work done by a constant force. As you can see in the picture, we can see a girl named Diane that is pulling a boy, her little brother, um, on a sled. And the mass of Jasper and his sled, we'll just write this as M1, is 26 kilograms. So that's the mass of Jasper and the sled. Um, we don't know the mass of Diane, and we don't really need it, actually. We're told that there's an angle of 20 degrees that she pulls with along this cord. And we are also told that there's some friction along the surface here. I know it's uh, a very snowy path, but there is still a little bit of friction here. So this is the friction uh, coefficient of friction here between the sled and the surface is 0.16. And it's a sliding friction, that's why it's kinetic here. So in part A, we're asked to calculate the work done by Diane. So we're trying to find the work done by, really, that tension force. So we'll call that work done by T tension force. Now if you recall, the work done is the force of tension multiplied by the displacement, which is delta R, that's given as 120 meters, multiplied by the cosine of the angle between the force of tension and the displacement, which is 20 degrees in this case. So we already know the displacement and we already know the angle of 20 degrees. What we need to find out is the tension. Um, and then we'll go on to part B after that. So to find the tension, this goes back to the previous chapter. We're looking for uh, the force of tension. And remember, if you read the problem carefully here, you'll see that the sled is moving at a constant velocity of 3 kilometers per hour. So since the velocity is constant, we know that the acceleration, which is the change in velocity over the change in time, must be zero. Remember, there's no change in velocity, then there's no acceleration. Which means that all the forces that are acting on Jasper here, right here at this point on the sled, this would all be balancing out. That means that the sum of the forces in the x and the y axes is going to be zero. So the first thing I would do uh, so that we could find this force of tension is to draw a free body diagram. So let's draw a free body diagram for Jasper and the sled together as one unit. So we'll just assume that we have just one single body. We'll just draw a little point here. This is really Jasper and the sled. We have a force of tension going off that direction. You could label it as F sub T or just T. It's up to you. We have a force of gravity going downwards. We have a normal force going upwards. And lastly, we have the contact force that comes from the friction. So that's going to be parallel and moving in the opposite direction that it's sliding. And we're given right along here an angle of 20 degrees. I think it would be appropriate to choose a coordinate system that is going straight up and then to the right. OK, so now we can go ahead and try to solve for the force of tension. So if we look um, along the x-axis, remember that she is moving at constant velocity, which means the net force is going to be balanced out in, along the x-axis. will be zero. So no acceleration. So it means along the x-axis, the x component of the tension, Ft sub x, must be balanced out by the force of friction. And so the force of tension along the x direction would be the force of tension multiplied by the cosine of the angle. That would be the x component of that tension. And then this would be equivalent to the force of friction, F sub F, which you could rewrite instead as mu times Fn. I'll write that as mu sub k times the normal force. So we can find the tension if we knew mu, yes we know that, and we know the angle, we've got to find that normal force. So I guess we're going to have to continue, come back to this. I'll just list this as equation one. Let's continue on and do the sum of the forces now along the y-axis. We know that they're going to be balancing out along the y-axis because this sled is not jumping up and down off the surface. So along the y-axis, don't make the mistake of thinking that the normal force is just equal to the weight. Remember that there is a vertical component of that tension that is pulling it upwards, thus decreasing the normal force. 
So if we sum all the forces along the y-axis, we'll have the normal force up plus the y component of the tension minus the weight, m1 times g. Therefore, the normal force will be equal to m1 times g minus the y component of that tension, which will be the force of tension times sine of the angle. So, we're and now if you look at the equation, we have really two unknowns, the force of tension and the normal force here, the normal force and again the tension. So let's solve for the tension, because that's what we need to find the work done by that tension force. And what we're going to do is we'll just call this equation number two, and we're going to substitute uh, equation two into equation one. So we're going to sub two into number one means we'll replace where we have the normal force with this whole expression. So we have Ft times cosine theta equals mu sub k times m1g minus Ft sine theta. All of that in brackets. And then we'll need to get rid of the brackets and then solve for Ft by itself. So we have Ft cosine theta equals mu k m1 times g minus mu k f t times sine theta. So we need to bring this term over here over to the left side because we would like to collect the light term. So we have f t cosine theta plus mu k f t sine theta equals mu sub k m1 times g. All right, and then we can pull out a common factor of f t and so we get cos theta plus mu sub k sine theta equals mu sub k m1 times g. And now, solving for the force of tension, we would get the following expression. Mu k times m1 g all over cosine of the angle plus the coefficient of kinetic friction times sine of theta. At this point, all you need to do is sub substitute all your knowns. We know the earlier we saw that the mass of Jasper and sled was 26 kilograms. The angle is 20 degrees and mu sub k is 0.16. So let's plug all that data into our expression down below. And plugging all the known information, we end up with a force of tension of 41 newtons. It's about 40.9969. Well, we can just round that off to 41 newtons. So all of that just to determine the tension force. So I probably should have put in, this was a kind of a free response question on the exam. You could obviously see that I would probably ask you to first draw the free body diagram and then uh, determine the tension. Uh, and then once you get the tension, I might ask you to find, say, the normal force now that you know the tension. And then get on to the work part in part like C or D. Okay, so let's now plug in our work done by the tension force would be the force of tension which is 41 newtons the displacement is 120 meters and the angle between the force of tension as you can see up here uh, that's this along the string and the displacement vector which is right along the ground is 20 degrees and this will give you a work done by the tension of 4,623 joules approximately. Okay, what are we asking part B now? Part B is to find the work done by the ground on the sled, which is really the normal force. Remember the normal force is that surface force, so it's that perpendicular force that is acting straight up. So let's go into part B. So the work done by the normal force would be the normal force multiplied by the displacement multiplied by the cosine of the angle between the normal, which is straight up, and the displacement vector. Remember, displacement is going this way. That is delta r. And you can see if the normal force is straight up along the y-axis and the displacement is right along the x-axis, then our angle is 90 degrees, which means, remember, cos of 90 is 0. So there's no work done by the normal force. Remember that whenever a force is perpendicular to the displacement, you don't get any work done. How about if we were to find out the work done by gravity? 
So I'll just put this as an aside. So the force of gravity is acting straight down. So it would be m1 times g multiplied by the displacement multiplied by the angle between the force of gravity, which is straight down, and the displacement, which is along the x-axis. Again, we get cos of 90 degrees, which means you get no work being done by the force of gravity. So these two perpendicular forces have contribute no work done into the system. And why don't we do the last remaining force? Let's find the work done by the force of friction. So that would be the force of friction multiplied by the displacement multiplied by the cosine of the angle between the force of friction, which is moving along the negative x-axis, so it's going to the left, and the displacement, which is going to the right. So that angle between these two vectors is 180 degrees. Remember, cosine of 180 degrees is really just negative 1. So we're going to get an answer of negative the force of friction multiplied by the displacement. And we can go ahead and calculate the force of friction. It would really just be the x component of the tension. So it would be really just negative um, that force of tension that we got, which was 41 newtons times the cosine of 20 degrees. Well, we're just using this expression here for the uh, force of friction. And then multiply by the displacement of 120 meters. And that's going to get you an answer of negative 4,623 joules. It's negative because there's energy being lost from the system to the environment. That's why if you feel the sled afterwards, it's going to have a feel a little bit warm because of that work done by friction. Okay, well, let's get on to the last part here. The last part is asking, what would be the total work done by the sled? Or on the sled, sorry. So if we were looking for the total work done on the sled, so this is really just the net work. There are kind of two ways that you could do it. Uh, you could just simply add the work done by all the different forces acting on the system. So the work done by the tension, the work done by the normal force, the work done by the force of gravity, and the work done by the force of friction. So you add all the individual works, and you would end up here with 4,623 plus 0 plus 0, but then minus 4,623, and your answer would be 0 joules. Another way that you could get the answer would be, just to write as a separate way, we could find the network by using the net force multiplied by the displacement multiplied by the cosine of the angle between the net force and the displacement. But the net force, the net force of the system is zero. Remember that F net is equal to M times A, but A is zero. So there is no net force. So remember, we said the sum of the force in the X and the sum of the force in the Y was zero because it wasn't accelerating, because it was moving at constant velocity. So therefore, the work done is zero joules. So in summary, when you look at this question, uh, Diane is doing positive work acting on her little brother, uh, Jasper, on the sled. That's positive work, and we found out that, that to be 4,623 joules. But at the same time, um, friction does negative work. It was exactly the same amount. It was negative 4,623 joules. And the reason why it was negative is because it was dissipating its energy. It was losing some of that energy that was being put into the system, exactly the same amount actually. And that energy was lost out of the system and hence it was negative. And you could tell the ground warms up, the sled probably warmed up a little bit. It was turning into another form of energy called thermal energy. Okay, that's it for example number one.